Hey guys, it's Greg Jones for Engine Builder. Today we're in Spartanburg, South Carolina. We're at Noonan Race Engineering and I'm joined by Barry Pettit. And between us here is a 4.9 Hemi and it's our Engine of the Week. Engine Builders Engine of the Week is sponsored by Pengrade One, L Ring DOS Original, and NPW. Barry, thanks so much for giving us a little time today to Absolutely. chat some noon and engines and uh, see the shop. Uh, and between us here is kind of one of your bread and butter, you know, engine platforms, the the 4.9. Uh, so if you would, we'd love to know a couple of details about it. Walk us through kind of what all goes into this. Because yeah. I understand, I mean, 99% of this stuff is all done here at noon and yep. um, you know, outside of some of the components we'll get into. Yeah, yeah. So this is, um, as you said, this is our 4.9. It's kind of been our staple in the industry now for a, minute, for a few years. Yeah. Um, this configuration as it sits is pretty much uh, as it would be in a car. You know, obviously we don't like the blower or any of that kind of stuff, but um, the 4.9 engine is typically a 523 cubic inch. Okay. Um, screw blower application is most popular, but uh, correct, we do, we machine the engine block, cylinder heads, intake manifold, uh, even the brackets for the idler assembly, yeah. all that kind of stuff in house. Um, and this engine has really become popular for three reasons. Uh, one of them is, is the performance. I mean, it is a very great performing engine. There's um, guys switching from 4.8 platforms. They'll see easily, you know, 200 horsepower before they really even start tuning into it. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, off the rip. It's yeah. a pretty good jump. So for sure. The other side of it is going to be the serviceability. Um, a lot of the no, no prep king, PDRA, type customers, they don't have that much time when they're actually having to service an engine. Um, so one of the uh, one of the features of a 4.9 that everybody likes to talk about, including us, is if, say, you heard a piston ring in one of your passes, you're able to pop the valve cover off, take the cylinder head off without removing any of this blower setup. Okay. Um, that seems like a pretty minute detail, but when you're in between rounds, that is a huge yeah. benefit. Yeah. Um, so customers really enjoy that. And uh, we went about the design of this engine uh, with that kind of serviceability in mind. So mm -hmm. customers can use it. It's very friendly uh, to actually work on if you do have to work on it. Yeah. And then the, the third reason is, is the durability. So with the increased bore center line in a 4.9, we're able to make some changes, um, which allowed us, you know, examples of those changes would be raising the cam height up, mm -hmm. uh, increased lifter bore spacing, stuff to where you could actually get your valve train geometry corrected, which has been a little bit of a problem in a 4.8 Hemi world for many, many years. The 4.9 allows us to fix a lot of that. Okay, very good. Um, Barry, you were talking about you know the serviceability and being able to remove the head without taking the blower off, without giving away like the trade secret, You know what, what it allows that to happen in terms of getting the head off without yeah, mo blow. most of it's going to be how the head is actually fastened to the block okay. in the manifold. Yeah. Uh, traditionally, a 4.8 Hemi is going to have some studs that come into the intake valley, some down studs, and the only way to get to those would be to go straight down through the blower, yeah. take all that stuff off. Gotcha. Uh, 4.9 is going to have 13 5.8 head studs uh, circling the perimeter of the cylinder head. Yeah. So you pull those off, and then there's five bolts along the side of the manifold. Um, once you get those off and you have your headers undone, you're ready to pull the head off. Yeah. So it, it cool. really is uh, is pretty trick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so obviously we're looking at a billet block, the billet heads, and that stuff's all machined here at Noonan um, in your CNC uh, shop. Um, how about some of the internal parts that you know typically go into the 4.9? Billet pistons, um, billet aluminum rods, and a uh, billet forged crankshaft. So we're okay. typically using a, a Wimberger or Bryant or okay. Cali's crank. Yep. Um, normally diamond pistons, R&R connecting rods. So it's very typical components just to our spec. Yeah. They're going to be inside this thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the 4.9 bore center, um, 
It's allowing you to get a little bit bigger bore diameter, so our pistons are generally bigger than everybody else's. Yeah. Um, we're normally able to run a little bit less stroke than guys are in 4.8s for that reason, okay. which helps us turn RPM. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of things that are really interconnected with this engine that make it a great platform. Yeah, absolutely. And again, with the billet cylinder heads, you guys have uh, some pretty trick valve train components that go along with that stuff, yep. as well as you know a rocker arm. Uh, you yeah, know, we have a, a billet piece that rocker kind of holds arm. everything in place. Yeah, yeah, we have a billet rocker arm assembly uh, option. We also run uh, reed rocker arms on these. Okay, um, there's uh, there's definitely uh, a lot of magic that happens with the valve train on a four nine. That's mm -hmm. I've got um, some PDRA drag racing guys that are going through the lights at ten four repeatedly. Wow. So I mean that's for this size engine that's pretty impressive to yeah. do over and over and over again. Yeah, um, that's really a testament of how well the valve train stability is. In this yeah. Engine. So you mentioned rig rocker arms. How about some of the other valve train components that, that might show up in an engine like this? Um, we use, uh, so it's either reed rocker arm, TND rocker arms. Okay. Um, we're all, all four nines are going to have the Encho 62 Jessel lifters, solid, uh, DLC coated. Um, we're normally going to have either a Manton or a Trend push rod. You know, uh, these things run five eighths push rods, which Okay. Pretty, pretty yeah. big. Yeah. Um, and then also for valves, we're going to be running, uh, it's normally a trick titanium or manly uh, valve with uh, pack or PSI sprigs. Okay. <clears throat> Very yeah. good. And then how about in terms of the oiling system, you know, most guys will run, is that a wet sump or dry sump setup? Or? We're mostly a dry sump system. Okay. Um, we do have some guys out there with wet sumps. Okay. You know, um, just you know, their, their theory in the car is they want all that weight down low, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I would say mostly we do dry sump systems, which is gonna yeah. be, um, a front, the oil pump will normally yep. go here. Okay. Uh, this is a mag, mag setup, obviously. Yeah. But if this was not here, the oil pump would go on still on this side, uh, yep. driving off the auxiliary drive. Okay. Um, so mostly it's a two-stage pump that'll come back, return to the pan, and then go to the, go to the tank, so. Yeah, very good. And then you can't ignore this giant PSI blower up top, yeah. um, but I understand that you guys will offer that with a couple of different, you know, blower options and, and yeah. boost options. Yeah. So the four nine, even with the intake manifold, there's a there's a plate that we can you can yeah. barely see here. Um, really, to make a change from a screw to a roots would just be changing this plate out, okay. and then you would there's a couple things on the bottom end that you would need to to swap around. Yeah. But uh, really, it makes it. A versatile package you know say you're you're screw blower racing and then somebody throws lead in your car all right i'm gonna go roots racing yeah. change that top plate put your roots blower on change a couple things on the bottom end yeah now you're a roots racer yeah. so it really makes it a versatile deal uh, we do have a, a pro charger manifold of course that's very different from from this setup sure um but it's uh it's doing well also i've i've seen dyno numbers of those things over 5,000 horsepower oh so wow it's um pro chargers are are stout as well yeah so, and that's right where I was going to go in terms of horsepower numbers that you guys are typically seeing. You know, what's what's kind of the range that that guys are can expect? Yeah, we're going to. The the hard part with these is is you're going to go by hub dyno, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, which is is car dependent. Yep. And and a temperature swing with these engines can cost you a hundred horsepower. Yeah. So typically on a screw blower application like this, you're going to see probably anywhere from 36, 3,800 horsepower. Okay. Um, pro charger applications, they're always going to dyno, you know, pretty much about the same, if not more. Yeah. And then the turbo guys are going to blow it out of the water power wise. They're just always going to be making steam. So yeah. I've, I've seen those guys well into the 5,000 range. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that's, it's pretty impressive. No doubt. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, Awesome engine, uh, you know, it's taller than both of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's cool to look at, uh, and, and I'm sure it's a blast to have in a car. So, Barry, anything else in terms of some of the details here that we're leaving out? Uh, at the moment, not really. I mean, huh? it's, um, this, this engine is, man, it's just been a great staple, and, yeah. and it's a combination of great engineering and great, great machining that we kind of, absolutely we're, we're humbly proud of. Yeah, you know? yeah, excellent. Well, Barry, thanks so much for telling us a little bit about it. Guys, we appreciate you watching this episode of Engine of the Week. Make sure you're checking out everything going on at Noonan Race Engineering. And as always, make sure you're checking out enginebuildermag.com for more great engine content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.